This is a tutorial on the muscles of mastication. Um, so the muscles of mastication are innervated by the trigeminal nerve and they're innervated by the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. So that's V3. So when you're testing the trigeminal nerve, you're testing muscles of mastication and um, facial sensation. So the muscles of mastication are innervated by the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve, whereas the muscles of facial expression are innervated by the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7. So the trigeminal nerve is cranial nerve number 5, and the muscles of mastication are innervated by V3, so the mandibular branch. And there are four muscles that you need to know which are involved in mastication. The temporalis, the masseter, the medial pterygoid, and the lateral pterygoid. <clears throat> so I'll begin by showing you the temporalis muscle, which is this muscle here, this big muscle which sits in the temporal fossa of the skull. So if I just show you the temporal fossa, you can see this indentation on the lateral aspect of the skull, and this is where the temporalis sits. And this muscle inserts all the muscles of mastication insert onto the mandible because the mandible is the, the bone that moves um, to cause mastication. It's the bone which is in <coughs> which is involved with chewing. <coughs> so, so um, the temporalis inserts onto the coronoid process of the mandible. So that's the this anterior process here. So if we just have a look at that. It just inserts here. So if I just show you the other side, um, you can see that it inserts just there, the coronoid process of the mandible. And just looking at the point of insertion and the and its origin, you can see that if the muscle were to contract, it would cause the mandible to elevate. and it can pull it back in a posterior direction if you just look at the direction of the fibers so it also causes the mandible to retract so there's four important movements to know um, with regard to the mandible you've got retraction so that's movement posteriorly you've got protrusion so that's movement in this direction anteriorly and you've got elevation, so bringing the mandible upwards in a superior direction. And you've got depression, which brings the mandible inferiorly. So four movements of the mandible. So looking at the origin and the insertion of the temporalis muscle, you can see that it elevates it and it can also retract it, looking at the direction of the fibres. So if you put your fingers in the temporal region on your face and you clench your muscles as if you were chewing, you can actually feel this muscle working. And when you're testing the trigeminal nerve, this is what you do to your patients. You put your, put your fingers in their temporal region and ask them to chew, grind their teeth, so you can feel this muscle working. So if I just bring back the muscle that I got rid of. Um, this muscle here is the masseter, and this is another muscle involved in mastication. So this muscle actually has um, two parts. It's got a superficial part and a deep part, which isn't actually very clear on this um, model. But the deep part inserts a bit more posteriorly on the zygomatic arch, and the superficial part inserts more anteriorly on the zyg zygomatic arch. So if you remember my tutorial on this skull, you've got this arch here, which is referred to as the zygomatic arch and it's comprised of the zygomatic process of the maxilla and the zygomatic bone. So the masseter um, has two parts, the deep and superficial part, which insert on the, uh, sorry, originate on the zygomatic arch, and um, it inserts onto the lateral aspect of the lateral surface of the ramus of the mandible. So again, this is a muscle you can feel on yourself. If you put your fingers over your over the sort of angle of your mandible and clench your teeth together, you can feel this muscle working. 
So what this muscle does is it elevates and retracts the mandible. Sorry, it just elevates the mandible. It doesn't retract the mandible. <coughs> so the next two muscles of mastication are the pterygoid muscles. You've got the lateral and the medial pterygoid muscles. And these muscles are called, called the pterygoid muscles because they insert onto the pterygoid process. So if you have watched the tutorials on the skull, bones of the skull, you'll remember that the pterygoid process is um, a process um, which extends downwards from the sphenoid bone. And the lateral and medial pterygoid muscles insert onto the lateral plate of the pterygoid process. So this is what I found a bit confusing. So the lateral pterygoid muscle is called the lateral pterygoid because it inserts onto the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. The medial pterygoid muscle is called the medial pterygoid because it inserts onto the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. So I'll just sh it's better I'll just show you this quickly on a different model. So we've got the temporalis here, the masseter and then if I remove the masseter you can see there are some muscles that lie um, deep to the to this mat to the mandible so if I just rotate it around you can see right on the inside surface of the mandible that there are two muscles unfortunately this um, this model doesn't actually have the medial pterygoid muscles so what we're looking at here is the lateral pterygoid muscles if I just show you from the outside you can see how they sit underneath the mandible on the interior surface so I just swing it around again so what you've got here are the lateral pterygoid muscles and there's two two parts you've got the um, superior t lateral pterygoid and the inferior lateral pterygoid and so this superior lateral pterygoid originates um, on the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid and it um, inserts uh, superiorly on the cond condylar process of the mandible so the um, so this is the posterior process on the mandible. The inferior um, lateral pterygoid inserts a, a little bit lower on the neck of the condyle of the mandible um, and it originates on the lateral plate of the pterygoid process. So just to show you again the pterygoid process is this thing that's pointing down so I'll just show you, if I rotate it around, if you keep your eyes on on this process here, this downward pointing process, this is the pterygoid process so it might be easier if I just remove the mass to remove the mandible temporarily and you can see this the pterygoid process sticking down so it's this bone here this thing sticking down and you've got medial and lateral plates so you've got this medial plate here and you've got the lateral plate so the pterygoid muscles insert onto the lateral plate sorry originate on the lateral plate but the medial medial pterygoid which isn't shown here inserts on the medial surface and the lateral pterygoid um, inserts on the lateral process and this model isn't entirely accurate because this muscle isn't shown to be um, inserting on the lateral plate but in reality it inserts on this lateral plate of the pterygoid process and if I just get the mandible back it inserts on the condyle of the mandible so just to repeat that you've got the pterygoid process here which is a part of the sphenoid bone you've got the lateral plate and the medial plate but the confusing thing is that the medial pterygoid doesn't insert on the medial plate which is this thing here it actually inserts on the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plate
sorry, originates and it inserts um, on the medial surface of the mandible. So that's the um, medial pterygoid muscle, which isn't shown here, unfortunately, but that originates in the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid and inserts onto the medial surface of the um, angle of the mandible. So the lateral pterygoid has two heads, it's got the two muscles, it's got the superior and inferior lateral pterygoid and the superior pterygoid, um, superior lateral pterygoid inserts um, joins with the capsule of the temporary mandibular joint high up on the condyle of the mandible and the inferior lateral pterygoid inserts on the neck of the condyle of the mandible. So those are the four muscles of the of mastication. You've got the temporalis, the masseter, um, which is this muscle here, and you've got the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles. So the medial pterygoid muscles are involved in elevation and side-to-side -side movements of the mandible and the lateral pterygoid is involved in protrusion and side-to-side -side movements of the mandible.